Welcome to episode 64, Tarot. Tarot. Yay! Whether you are brand new to tarot or an experienced tarot reader, we invite you to come along as we discuss how we found our way to work with tarot and how we use tarot as a method of healing and insight. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. Welcome to episode 64, Tarot! Tarot. (laughs) I love how I went high and you went low. (laughs) I I was doing like tarot, like, ooh. Ooh. Ah, And I was doing tarot, like, bright, shiny. (laughs) The sun, the world. The moon. The moon. (laughs) Death. The tower. This is my tower year, by the way, but we can talk about that later. Anyway, uh, I said we could talk about that later because what I'd like to talk about now (laughs) is where we are right now. Would you like to get us started? I would love to check in. Uh, I just recently read a book and I wanted to share the book and how I felt about it. It was, it's called Bittersweet Mm. and it's by the author Susan Cain, Cain with a C. Uh, She's also the author of a book that I read a couple years ago called Quiet. It was about introverts Uh, because I'm, I'm an extrovert, but Mm. I am partnered with an introvert and I, a lot of my friends are super introverted. Boy, howdy. Yeah. So that was a good, that was a good book, but I wanted to just check in about that book, Bittersweet. Because I thought it was really interesting. And what caught my attention about the book was I've always noticed that I've enjoyed music in in minor keys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I read a snippet of the book somewhere and it was talking about that she noticed that she liked music in minor key. And that that was one of the reasons why she started doing research. And originally the book was more about that. And then it turned into her discovering that it was all about this type of personality, a bittersweet personality, people who are more inclined to, uh, to sensing and plugging into the bittersweet nature of life. And one way, one way that that can be expressed is through this desire to listen to music in a minor key, which triggers those feelings. So I I just thought it was super interesting and it totally blew my mind that this was even a thing and as I was reading the book, I just kept feeling seen in ways that I had not felt seen before and also understanding things about myself that made more sense when I looked at it through this lens. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that wow. cool? That's so cool. So, so may I respond to a couple of things that yes. you said? Well, first of all, when you said the title Bittersweet, and I didn't know the author, and I thought it was a fiction, like a novel. I was like, oh. wow, she's reading novels. No. <laughs> but no. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I read nonfiction. If the, we talked about this in some earlier podcast episodes, but. yes, yes, we did. Uh, but yes, the, the, yeah. So, so that was one one response. And then the second is that I <clears throat> bittersweet is one of my favorite words. Oh, <clears throat> and my, that might be one of our connections too, because bittersweet and poignant. Yes, and so much of my memories are the some of the most striking memories for me are ones mm-hmm. that have both tin, you know bitter and sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, I think I'm I, I'm going to have to add that book to my queue. I would I would love to hear your mm-hmm. thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. It was it was one of the things that was really interesting to me was the lens that it looks at life through as a as someone who does reside in that bittersweet is that when I'm in when I'm in the sweet, I'm remembering the bitter, and when I'm in the bitter, mm-hmm. I'm remembering the sweet. But it's it's hard to explain because my experience is that a lot of people think that it what it is is it this is still new for me, so my words aren't super clear yet, but that like I, I, I've experienced people from the outside thinking that, um, like I'm, a, I'm never satisfied because when I'm in the sweet, I'm thinking of the bitter and when I'm in the bitter, I'm thinking of the sweet, but really what it is, is it's this sense of like, it reminds me of the wheel of the year, like the, the in the dark times, I'm remembering that there is the light, even though I am in the dark and in the light, I'm remembering that there is the dark, even though I'm in the light. And I feel that way in life experiences 
because as I'm experiencing this joy, I'm th- I'm like thinking of the fact that it's transient. And so I should therefore experience it more fully, knowing that it will be gone. And then in the times when it's gone, remembering the beauty that it was, but knowing that, that it's cyclical. So, it, yeah, so it's like not a, not a it's, in my experience, it's not necessarily a negative thing. It's just a more understanding the transience of life and the fullness. Wow. It's so amazing to hear that because I think that explains so much of what I think I see. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, like your balance. Mm -hmm. Um, So when things go wrong, like when people forget to bring things to rituals. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Has it ever happened? (laughs) I mean, not even Mm. what, two days ago? You know, that, that I think that a part of that is because you... Um, and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. This is mm-hmm. just what I'm sensing. Um, that because you're able to experience both sides of this, that when something, quote unquote, bad happens, you, it's not necessarily even reframing. You you can see and feel the balance of, you know, there's, you know, so how can we come out of that? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a part of it, you know, that you can stay, stay on even keel. So what I suspect <laughs> um, so easily. Thank you. Know? you. Um, so, wow. Wow. That that helps. That explains a lot. Thank you. I, I'd be curious, if you choose to read mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. what your sense of it is applied to your life. Yeah. Because oh, okay. you and I mm-hmm. have so many similarities. Yeah. So. We resonate on a number yeah. of different... We resonate on a number of different levels. Do. Yes. Particularly <laughs> in the minor. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Yay, Thank you for yeah. letting me share. Thank you did, for sharing that. Did you want to share about something? Check yeah, in? I did. So one of the things I want to talk about is um, actually a part of uh, my relationship with you is your mm-hmm. sister. Um, one love of, her. I, I love her. She's pretty great. She is pretty cool. <laughs> um, one of the things I heard her telling someone years ago was that she made colloidal silver. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? And, get, you know, and I knew of it. And I remember telling that other person, oh, yeah, it's really wonderful. I basically used it for hot spots on my dog. It's, oh, it's good yeah. for it's like healing. Mm-hmm. Um Excuse me. It's good for healing cuts Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so that's how I used it. And um, I was running out and I thought I could go to someplace like Whole Foods or whatever and buy some more. Or I have someone who makes it. And and I um, I called her up and asked her and she wouldn't take any money for it. But she said she she said, I'll brew you up some. So I started picturing. (laughs) So because what happens is when the it's made by uh, there's it's a lot more complicated than this. But the simple version of it is you put these um, silver rods in, in distilled water. And then you electrify them through a battery or whatever. And then when it's and I don't know how long you brew it, but you know it's kind of done because it's kind of um, like it lo- almost looks like smoke starts coming up from the water. Mm-hmm. And so I'm picturing her with a witch hat on, <laughs> and I mean she's not stirring because there's no you know there's not a cauldron, but her like rubbing her hands together and cackling <laughs> because she said I'm gonna brew up some anyway. So I I didn't know. When I'm talking with her, she was saying, she said, oh, yeah, I asked how long does it last? And she said, when it starts to lose its effectiveness, I just use it to clean the house. And I was like, what? I had no idea of all of these uses. I went on, um, I just did an internet search and I knew about how it's good for healing. But people take it orally. People, I mean, in fact, when I asked her, she said, are you, do you want it for oral or topical? And I said, uh. <laughs> Topical? <laughs> like what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly. But I didn't realize how um, how much people had used colloidal silver, and um, and how it, how long people had used colloidal silver. Apparently, people used that before they knew about antibiotics. So, like the ancient Greeks and Romans Whoa. used colloidal silver. Isn't that amazing? It like in some ways it feels so like new, but then it's like actually it's really old. It's really <laughs> oh, I, which which you know is one of my favorites, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, yeah, so it is. Um, so I have a well, I had a quart of colloidal silver, um, and uh, and I'm already using it for everything. It's like what? Yeah. So yeah, I'm I, I put some in my mouthwash. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anyway, that's just another if you if you want another natural approach I, I use it for skin care um for healing um and you know but but you can search this this is another another modality that that will be very helpful that keeps you from having to buy a bunch of prescriptions that's all i'm saying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and i one of the things i love about this is it reminds me that i don't have to do it all and that in a cool way 
when I'm connected to wonderful witchy women, I get so much from learning from them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Soap making, colloidal silver, yeah. herbs, astro- astrology, yeah. tarot. Yeah. Well, and, and we learn, but we also get. That's <laughs> also true. We also, we also get soaps <laughs> and we get tea. Look, I'm not going to lie. Get- <laughs> The getting is a cool part, too. The getting is a cool part. A really, really cool part. So, yeah. So, yes. The teas. Thanks. Thank you for reminding me about the tea. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So, we get we get a, a lot of... We should have a barter system. Except right? except why bother? Because they're just giving it to it's us. Just, right. <laughs> I think that's the thing. That's the cool thing is that everybody... I don't... Well, that sounds like I'm not... I reference it. Mm-hmm. The things I love, I'm so happy to share mm-hmm. that... Um, I'm just, I'm just like, please, like, let me share this yeah, with you. Yeah, let me give you some. And yeah. I mm-hmm. get that sense of, about other people in our circle as well. Exactly, exactly. So. I love getting teas pushed on me. I you know, know, like, hey, you yeah. want this oolong? <laughs> sure. Except, <laughs> yes, I do. Except, no, you're not. I don't, not anymore. Because you don't want decaf. I know. Trust so me on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you want this rooibos? There we yeah, go. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> you want some lavender? Lemon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. give it to me. Mm-hmm. Give me that. Lovely. Our episode today is, um, you know, hopefully this will be uh, another one of our series where we'll talk more in depth about certain aspects of it. But today I thought we'd do a little bit of an overview of our experience of and our thinking about tarot. I love that. Spoiler alert, we both read tarot. We both read <laughs> So, just so they know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. where we end. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, and, and well, as we'll learn um, t- in this episode... We have totally different approaches because mm-hmm. we're two different perspectives, <laughs> whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so, and, which I think is so much fun. I do too. Mm-hmm. I do too. Mm-hmm. Could we maybe start with what we were, th- before we were t- both readers, because uh, you and I both did not grow, grow up as, uh, in like a witchy culture. So can we talk about our thoughts about tarot before we read tarot? Sure. Um, shall I start? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think, I think my, mm, I thought that, I never thought that tarot was like a gimmick or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, from, from the time I was a really young child, I knew that there were these forces of, of knowledge, of wisdom that we didn't necessarily see in our day to day lives. Now I was uh, raised, um, missionary Baptist, not Southern Baptist. There's a difference. Um, (laughs) And, um, and, and so, you know, m- much of my thinking was tied into very traditional Christian thought. And, um, and so tarot didn't really fit in that. And so I was, I was always kind of, I was definitely curious and I thought it would work and et cetera, but I was always a little leery about it because I couldn't fit it into my, my Christian topology. Ooh. Um, and so, um, I, even as a child, like I remember seeing things and, and being struck by, you know, seeing different cards, like just on, you know, uh, in so in uh, popular media or whatever, I was going to say social media, but there was no social <laughs> media. The social media was, you know, channel, channel four oh, when I was growing up, right. you know, PBS is social media. <laughs> exactly. The five channels that we could get. <laughs> right. So, um, and then we had public access when cable started. So, Whoa. yeah, but anyway, but, um, but just in, in the popular media and television, newspaper, whatever, you'd see a card or whatever. And I knew that it was powerful, but I just, I didn't want to think it through. I didn't, I never took any further steps until I became older and I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this in other episodes, but I went through periods of binge and purge. Have I talked about that? No. So I would go super, super woo woo and get to the point where I'd realize I'm like totally living, leaving Christianity. And I would, uh, and I literally would purge. I mean, I'd throw stuff away or give it away or whatever and, and pull myself back into the Christian fold. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I went through, set, I, I went through that with kind of, I went through that with, Um, woo woo with witchiness I went through that with kind of kink stuff Um, but it was just it was I would allow myself like my little wings to kind of unfurl and then just as they got big enough to really begin to take me off the ground I I yeah close up and and curl I literally like like those those uh, bugs when you touch them and they roll into a ball Mm -hmm. I would literally do I mean not literally but I would emotionally and mentally and spiritually do that 
Oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, so during one of those uh, binges, I, I started reading about it and I think I got a Rider Waite deck and like probably at Am- uh, not Amazon, the pre-Amazon Barnes and Noble <laughs> right. or, or Walden Books or something right. like that. Um, and got, or went to one of those crystal stores mm-hmm. and, and, and got those. And um, I started reading for, you know, I, I started reading up on it and getting books because you know, there was no internet. Um, I know it's so hard to imagine, isn't it? But yeah. Um, and then um, I started reading for people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think I really ever read for myself. And, and that's where the, we'll talk about this later, the total switch. But um, I would start reading for people. And later I would find, you know, that I was eerily correct. Mm-hmm. And people would tell me this. And that really scared me mm-hmm. because um, where was this power coming from? No, no one talked about it in the Bible mm-hmm. except for the witch of Endor, which um yeah, it's, 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 a, it's in the Old Testament, but anyway, oh. yeah. But you know, thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not suffer, suffer a witch, witch to live. To live. To yeah. live. You know, so um, I think that you and I both know that line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's the one thing that we remember from the Bible. But um, but yeah. So it was just it was it was so fraught for me. It was so filled with so many other fears and doubts um, about myself and about my religion. Or, and and my religion religious um, experience that um, it was never a real clear uh, relationship with the tarot itself and and then I remember um, I for something I can't remember what it was but it was a Halloween and I read for about four or five hours for and dressed up like a gypsy you know it's like <laughs> totally inappropriate but whatever <laughs> those are the days and um, <laughs> and led and 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 learned um, how how spot on so many of my predictions were that um I got rid of it and didn't pick it up again till the 90s wow so that would have been this that would have been the 80s that mm-hmm. would have been the 80s and I didn't pick it up until really seriously about 15 years ago so mm-hmm. the 2000s wow yeah yeah it was it's it, it it's it's a wonderful relationship but there's so much fear and doubt and mm-hmm. you know it's like that bittersweet it's so much dark a shadow for mm-hmm. me that's tied that's the word shadow that's tied it in there for me so it, it, not now not mm-hmm. now but back then it was so what <laughs> hopefully you can pull us out I, of this, this, I, this spiral I did not know that mm-hmm. and listening to you tell that story as somebody who sees you now mm-hmm. and my experience of you when you read or when you do any of these magical things you are so there's so much depth and mm-hmm. shadow and light it's just so there's so it's I awe-inspiring for mm-hmm. me Hearing you say that you, like the binge and the purge, mm-hmm. I feel so sad. Yeah, because like yeah. whenever seeing you pull away, I'm I, like in my mind, I'm like, no, 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 come back, come mm-hmm. back, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that that that's not your cycle, at least that I see. Like, oh, I stepped off that you're that in wheel. it. Okay, I'm, I'm off so that wheel. glad. I'm so mm-hmm. glad. Mm-hmm. I love you so much. Thank you. Like, Thank oh my you. gosh. <laughs> That's why I went, remember when we talk about some of the young, our younger mm-hmm. members and I say, I am so glad that they never, they didn't have to go through what I, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's just so wonderful for me to see that. So, wow. so okay. Oh, okay. Let's hear about your okay. experience. Which my tarot please. journey is that I grew up seeing it in popular culture and I thought it was, I thought it was like kind of campy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it just seemed know it just seemed shallow and stupid that you would go get a tarot reading if you wanted to know if a guy liked you or something Mm, you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know like it just it never appealed to me it seemed silly and a waste of time um and I never even really considered if it was real or not I probably I probably knowing who I was probably thought it was real-ish but real-ish you know (laughs) I love that (laughs) but it, it just never seemed it didn't seem to have like any sort of depth to okay. it the power you yeah think. um so I like I just was never really attracted to it never really gave it much thought and I never really knew anybody that really read um because mostly I I, I was not around witchy communities and some of my first witchy communities it wasn't really a part of and then I went to um I went to college and my freshman year I don't even remember how this happened but I'm such an extrovert this happened <laughs> my janitor on my floor in my college dorm, I somehow figured out that he was a witch and I told him I, I felt like I was a witch, but that I didn't mm-hmm. really know. Mm-hmm. He like took me under his wing. Oh my gosh. And we would like meet at a coffee shop mm-hmm. and he would bring me books 
and then we would like talk about witchy things. No. I am so serious. I look back at this and part of me is like, oh my God, I'm so glad he didn't murder you. You know? <laughs> Which he was, he was always wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, there was never anything weird. Yeah. Um, but part of me, now as an adult, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? you doing? He was just so happy that there was, I mean, it sounds like it was not a common thing where you were. Yeah, well, I was in the, the we called it the buckle of the Bible belt. I was mm-hmm. in rural Missouri mm-hmm. in the Ozarks. Um, so, no, it was not common. Yeah, he was so happy. They said, like, what? Right? My child! Yeah, right? My child! <laughs> so we would meet and we would talk about different witchy things and, and it was really wonderful. Um, and just, I learned so much from mm-hmm. him, just not really about super specific things, but like I learned about the wheel of the year and just kind of like larger witchcraft concepts. And he gave me a tarot deck, which I said, thank you. And I promptly put in a drawer and, and did not use because I was not, I was like, that's not yeah, really my yeah, thing, but oh, cool. Jam. Like, okay. wow. Okay. Neat. Like a witchy thing. Okay. Putting mm-hmm. that away. Mm-hmm. And I was not interested in it at all. And then, um, and then I, well, at that same time period in my life, I joined my first coven and, uh, someone in that coven, I, I never saw this person like read tarot, but they gave me a card and it was the high priestess card. Wow. And, and I remember like looking at that card and feeling a connection to it and not really understanding why. And then again, I put that away and I didn't really think about it for a very, very long time. It wasn't time. It, I, that's what I really feel like. Mm-hmm. It, it was not time. You need something to hang it on, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did the change occur for you? So I actually got into tarot. Um, I began reading tarot during my apprenticeship for our circle. Really? Yeah. Okay. So how long was it? 15 years ago? No, yeah, yeah. 15? It was It was over 10 years ago. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 2013 was whenever I had my rite of passage. Okay, okay. Yes. So, and so you'd started a while before Yeah, that. so two years So had you, so the person that you were working with, or mm-hmm. did you work with other women in our circle, or? So the, I, the, the woman that I was being mentored by mm-hmm. asked me if I wanted to learn to read, and I told her, not really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. Um, I was like, it's cool and stuff, but like, I don't mm-hmm. really feel like it's for me. Mm-hmm. And then she explained to me that... And I don't know if this is really what she thinks or if she was, she knew what to say to get me because she did. <laughs> um, and like, not in like a negative way, yeah, but, but like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if she was like, this is my in with her. Like, okay. okay. Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But she explained to me that, that a tarot is an act of healing. Whoa. Yeah. And my, and my personal belief is that healing, like my definition of healing is healing is coming into alignment with the sacred. Mm-hmm. So for me, death is the ultimate act of healing, right? Right. But the tarot is an act of healing because I am opening up and listening to the voice of the sacred through these cards and as a way for me to, to like move my life and adjust it into alignment with the sacred. So that that's my understanding. And she explained it to me, not in that way, but in, mm-hmm. in a similar way. This is how I've like processed it. Yes, it, in exactly. In the 10, 10 plus years since then. But when she explained it to me like that, it was like a switch went off in my head and I was like, whoa, yeah, game on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> and so she would read for me and like explain to me what she was doing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I started reading for her mm-hmm. and she would kind of coach me through, mm-hmm. um, like she would kind of coach me through it. It reminds me of like student teaching. Yeah. You know, yeah like of course, first yeah. you watch the teacher, mm-hmm. then you like co-teach mm-hmm. and then you teach and she watches mm-hmm. you. Like mm-hmm. it was sort of that, yeah. that sort of thing. So, um, when you did that, did you learn like the traditional meanings of the cards and things like that? Uh, like she, when ex- I say traditional, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She explained to me that, and I took a lot of notes, mm-hmm. um, cause it was like, I didn't really start to use books until mm-hmm. later on, but she explained to me like the suits and the, and the face cards mm-hmm. and the, um, the difference between major and minor arcana and, and, and like stuff like that. And then she taught me to use like an intuitive approach. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then from, so then I practiced with her and then as I became more into reading myself, um, and I think I even, since we were doing this podcast, I talked about how I did a year yes. practice. Um, then I, 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 I've, I've shifted from. I've shifted more towards the way that I think is, is really more for me, mm-hmm. but it's deeply, it is deeply tied to the way that I was taught. It's just, there's some minor, like, so really? diving more into the, in, 
into the inherent meanings of the card as opposed to... I think just like shifting... It's like uh, being a teenager and turning into adult and like shifting your worldview just a little bit gotcha. personalized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just like kind of taking the practice as I learned it with her mm-hmm. and then learning that there were just some like tweaks for me that yeah. make it more... Make it more um, you. More like how it, how it fits for me. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Wow. Can you share about like when you, when you finally landed on your practice? Um, it was because it might have been the same person um, in our circle and... Um, I had, I think I had some decks, but I was kind of like you. They were tucked away. I didn't do a whole lot with them. Every once in a while, I'd pull them out. And and I remember um, someone had a deck that I just thought was really beautiful. So one of the things that we'll talk about is I need a really visually stimulating mm-hmm. deck. And, um, and I ended up getting that deck. Um, and I remember we were at a retreat, and the two of us pl- did a lot of work around that. Mm. And um, in fact... Um, I'll, I'll show you. She actually gave me a shadow box of one of those cards. I'll show it to you before oh, you go. Cool. Anyway, um, so so I think I got into it because um, it was visually stimulating for me, and and then I started through that deck exploring some of the traditional meanings, but how that deck kind of uh, presented them. Mm-hmm. So with each, so I guess we should say this. Um, the, the, there's a traditional deck that a lot of people use. It's the Rider weight, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, and, and that kind of established for it, for it in the United States and parts of Western Europe, um, a, a certain way of approaching each of the cards. Um, and, and even though there, t- if you go, if you look it up, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands, maybe not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of different decks. A lot of them are based on that same, uh, meaning for each card and they just maybe tweak it a little bit and then some totally go away from it, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So we should just say that. <clears throat> and maybe one of our episodes will be on the, the, um, illustrator for Rider Waite because that's a huge story. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, a woman and her relationship with uh, Crowley and all that kind of stuff. So we can, maybe we can talk about that. But anyway, um, so I got one of those decks and then and you know and then I started collecting decks because they were cool and the, the cool people had numbers of decks and I didn't. It's like ah. <laughs> and um, and I there were a couple that I thought I should like the mother piece because it had a lot of. Uh, women of color and I should re- um, relate to and resonate to and I and they were round and they had different ways of, of looking at them and they didn't hit me mm-hmm. they just didn't hit me it's um I would say it's only been in the past five years that I've really started to um get back into it but I didn't get back into it to read like I had originally I got back into it for um personal individual insight so kind of um, I, I, I've, I love that idea that you mentioned of it helping, of it being a healing modality and helping to align. I've used it more for insight. And I think that I'm going to add that layer to it and open myself up to that potential. Uh, when I, um, when I start reading again, reading again, I, I've kind of put them aside for the past couple of weeks, but when I pick them up again, mm-hmm. so yeah, I don't know. Did I answer the question? Yes. Did I okay. Like it was, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you did. Oh, we did say that. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, so let's talk a little bit about tarot. <laughs> We've talked a little bit about how we started mm-hmm. thinking about tarot. Um, do you, would you like to talk a little bit about decks? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned the Rider Waite. Uh, I was taught on a Rider Waite. Mm-hmm. Also, the the janitor, the custodian guy, mm-hmm. gave me gave me a, the traditional Rider Waite deck, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, in the yellow box with the blue plaid background. Yes! You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the su- super traditional, mm-hmm. like what you would buy at Barnes & Noble or, yeah. or mm-hmm. whatever, um, which I put it in my, in my sock drawer and like didn't look at again mm-hmm. for a decade or two. <laughs> yeah. You know? So do you have your original deck? Great question. I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I felt, totally thought this was going somewhere else. <laughs> I know. I have feelings about it. Uh, so I started, so then whenever my, during my mentorship, I pulled it out cause she told me, she's like, well, you should get a deck to start using. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have one. And it felt so perfect. Cause I, I felt like he had given that deck to me so that I would have it for now. 
right. you know, and right. maybe he didn't know that, and I certainly didn't know mm-hmm. that, but it felt like that was what, so I pulled it out and started reading with it, and then um, I kept it in what looked like a jewelry box, uh, which was a tarot box, you know, to keep my cards protected from energy, and um, and then my house was broken into, and all that was stolen was, like, air quotes, jewelry, including my tarot. I'm assuming that whoever broke in thought that it was jewelry and took the box. So I was devastated when that deck was gone. And boy, oh boy, if I didn't say some mean things out into the universe. like <laughs> Things that were not coming from the highest part right, of me. Right, <laughs> it was not coming from the highest part of me. Um, <clears throat> so, but then I, so then I, uh, then COVID happened. And during COVID, I, I really think that I, my tolerance for the colonial, like colonized nature of tarot really became something that I could not look away from. I, I was aware of it before and it was, the deck was, the deck is super white. Boy, how it's all white people. It's all white people. And then it's like super. Western European. Yes. Yes. And like classist. And, um, and, and I knew that before and I, and I, and like, while I wasn't like a super big fan of it, it didn't, it didn't really bother me. And then during COVID, when I began doing readings and things, it just rubbed me so much that I, I, I it was like, I could not look away from it. And I did not, it, it began, um, getting in the way of my readings. And I loved like what you said, like you looked for a really visually stimulating deck. Mm-hmm. I looked for a deck that kind of like wasn't visually stimulating, but, (laughs) but, but I could hear. Oh, okay. And all of that stuff was so loud. I couldn't hear. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. And I'm I'm like looking at it and I'm looking at the white people like on their knees, like groveling before like Mm -hmm. the priest or whatever. And I'm like, I can't hear. (laughs) 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 Ah. Too much noise. Yeah. Yeah. Too much noise. So then I, so then I, uh, I began looking for a deck and it was a pretty long process until I found one that um that not only i that not only that i liked but that also felt good to me and right. i landed on the modern witch deck oh yeah i think you've mentioned it before mm-hmm. um do you i might be going off script here mm-hmm. but do you read do you read for other people with that i um so i love that you said like you used to only read for mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i only read for myself me too <laughs> me too oh my gosh okay it's okay. like super rare if mm-hmm. I read for someone else and mm-hmm. that's mostly because and my my personal reasoning for that is when I read it's very honest and most of the time I don't want to deal with it I don't want to deal with I, first of all I'm not willing to censor for other people and I'm not sure that other people are ready to hear it <laughs> so I don't yeah. really read for other people like it's not a it's not like a like a, oh yeah, cool. Let's throw some cards. You know, it, for me, the only time I've read for other people, it's been like, I don't want to say serious, but like taken, taken seriously mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of like, are you sure you want to hear this? Is this something that you're really open to? If this is something that you're really open to, then I am open to reading for you. And it's only been for people that I like really am connected to. May I jump in on that? Yeah. Because one of the things I, you know, uh, I think um, a lot of people will immediately think, oh, okay, well, if the tower comes up or if death comes up, how are you going to explain that to them? Mm-hmm. But I also find that when there's something that seems like it's really abundant mm-hmm. and really rich, that that's, that often brings up a lot of feelings in, in, in the other person, too. <laughs> yeah, because Joy is vulnerable. Yeah. See our last episode. Or see, like, a couple episodes ago, yeah, uh, exactly. Brene Brown, Joy yeah. and Gratitude yeah, episode. Exactly. exactly. And, mm-hmm. and so, some you know, there's certain things that you just have... I have no idea how they're going to be taken. Mm-hmm. And, and like you say, it's like, do I have the spoons for this? Do right? I have the, the bandwidth to mm-hmm. kind of coach them through this? Um, can, can I just, yes, this is please. totally a total aside. Um, for, for one of our um, paths, these are intensives that we have in our circle. Um, we had a, uh, one of our members and, and then she does, she did trance work with this, another woman and they came in and it was all about, it was the maiden. Mm-hmm. It was, do you remember, were you at this yes. one, the maiden path? Mm-hmm. And they did a trance about going back into your childhood and, and, you know, being, and you're being a maiden and, and your mother is there and you're singing and you're dancing. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know that let's say that there were 15 of us there but by the time they were done that they they thought that this was going to all be about like you know catching you know light, lightning yeah. bugs and fireflies and, da, 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 and light and, and singing we were sobbing women were sobbing we were, we were 
<laughs> women were like in corners, like with their big toe in their mouths, rocking. <laughs> And and the two women running the trance, they were kind of staring at each other like, what Shit, the hell? This, is not, this didn't go as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> so so every time I, I, I think about reading, I think about that where it doesn't matter what your intention is. You don't know wh- where this is going to go. And do I have, do I have the, the therapeutic um, mentality mm-hmm. to be able to help someone mm-hmm. once I've done the reading. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I still like, fuck no. Right? Because because the power of it is so huge for me that mm-hmm. I want to delve deeper and deeper into that power. Yes. And I don't want to try to have to translate it or 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 you know or or, or make it or like you say, censor or mm-hmm. filter it for someone else. Mm-hmm. I feel that. Mm-hmm. And I feel so seen that with hearing the hearing you say that because I've mm-hmm. always felt a little selfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can tarot. You can read for other people. You can read for yourself. You can do a combination of that, mm-hmm. and it's all it's all real and it's all valid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I love the aspect of like now when I'm reading for myself, I can add these other elements. I can mm-hmm. think about how this is really not just telling me something, but helping me to do the something that it's telling me mm-hmm. is a good thing for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, because it's so pa- it, it's so powerful, mm-hmm. and that's the other thing. When you read for other people, I always wonder, do they know what a blessing this is? Do they know that the universe is speaking to them? Correct. This is not about, you know, is, she, is he going to ask you out or, you know. Exactly. It, though it can be. It can be. It, it can. It, it, and it can and, but but if, it's, if it's about, can is he going to ask you out? It's always about, and so what does that tell you about yourself? Exactly, and, right? <laughs> and your relationship with nature. Exactly, and, yeah. And, and there's so much more to that. Mm-hmm. And. And, and, and if, if they really want to kind of skim the surface, I'm not their gal. Exactly. You know, go, go to, go to, go pay someone yeah. who will tell them the, right. the way they need to hear it. Right. But yeah. Okay. This is me going again, me going off script. Um, have you ever like gotten your cards read? Like one time I got my cards read mm-hmm. in, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name of it in, in New Orleans in that square. Oh, uh, Congo square. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The, the French one. The, the French one. Yeah. French, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoot. Last is something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, during the daytime, it's like an mm-hmm. art art people set up. Yes. And then mm-hmm. at nighttime, the art people go and then, like, readers set up. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, sometimes I like to get my cards read at places mm-hmm. like that, but I don't tell them that I read. Yes. Oh. Oh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about that experience. So, just because I think that it's fun. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because I, I, like, pretend like I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then I... And a part of it is that I like getting other people's insights, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, because uh, I am my own worst enemy sort of thing. Mm-hmm, you know, like mm-hmm. I am, I am, I am the worst at blinding myself, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so other, someone else's insights is always, is always like, uh, reveals things. Yeah. Um, but, but I also like it because then I'm like, are they, do, are they they know, the, yeah. do they know what they're talking about? Yeah. Uh, so it's just it's just fun. What have you found when that happens? Uh, I mean, sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes sometimes I can tell that they're just making it up to make money, which mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a job, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sure that a lot of people enjoy, you know, the person like telling them what they want to hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which whatever. But uh, sometimes, sometimes they do know what they're talking about, and I've had really great experiences. But Ooh, okay. I do just think it's really fun to do. Okay, yeah, I have, you know, I haven't because I've just I think I've been a little snobby about it. It's mm-hmm. Like, can you can you tell me more than I can tell myself? Mm-hmm. But now that you mention it, sometimes people can, right? Mm-hmm. Because, like you say, I can blind myself. Like the universe has probably been telling me this long before I picked up the tarot deck, exactly. right? Right, <laughs> exactly. exactly. And I, if I haven't seen it, then you know, sometimes I won't see it even with the tarot mm-hmm. deck, right? Mm-hmm. But somebody else can explain it in a way that's outside of my world view, mm-hmm. and that might, you know, make me go, whoa, hold up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, we'll see. Yeah. But I will try that. I, th- I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that I did want to go back to and say about, so I switched to the modern witch yes. deck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I like a lot because I like that the, so it's all like women mm-hmm. or gen, gender fluid, mm-hmm. which I really like. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. And, and there's a lot more diversity in, in bodies and, um, and I, and I like that. It's kind of fun that it's modernish, you know, mm-hmm. like the cities, the cities of like the, the original Rider weight are like medieval cities. Yes. But in the modern, which it's, it looks like 
urban cities, gotcha. you know, mm-hmm. um, which I think is, is, I think is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, something I, I still am not super liking about it is I don't like the king, queen, you know, like I don't like the gendered classist hierarchy. Um, and I know that there are some decks that are, that, that, you know, do that different, but I, I do really, I, for the most part, I really, really like it. And it is what I currently, currently read with, but staying in the Rider weight lineage for me is really important because it's how I, it's like how I, it's the, it's the framework for how I read. And, um, and then having a deck that is really dedicated to the imagery, like with consistent imagery. So for example, like grapes equal wealth. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. like mm-hmm. the, as I, it ties into the same thing. That's why I, like I went into being an English teacher, mm. like symbolism and imagery is really important to me. Archetypes are really important to me. So I need, that's like, that's like the, that's like the ladder that I climb to get through right. my readings. So if, if, like, there are some decks which are super beautiful, but they're like, there isn't that connection. It's just like yes. different pretty images for each card. I'm mm-hmm. like, I need the, I need the, the consistent, consistent yeah. imagery yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to like tie myself to receiving these messages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, particularly if you're if you're if you're not sitting there with the book, right? If you're right. really trying to like look kind of what I I feel it's like a, a tunnel vision. Like I look at the card and then it's like oh, everything starts to mm-hmm. like my it gets bigger and bigger in my vision and everything else kind of fades to the side or blurs out or whatever. And to be able to do that, having something consistent, at least according to the deck writers' um, worldview, mm-hmm. then allows you to apply that in a certain way apply that in your individual way uh what de- do you want to share about what deck you read from sure i'm currently so i'm dedicated this year we've talked about this so um you used this last year i don't know if you're using it the ritual planner i it's used the- it during the year that i dedicated mm-hmm. okay. to tarot so, mm-hmm. i use the ritual wr mm-hmm. ritual mm-hmm. D- yeah w-r-i-t-u-a-l so and ritual my, and my so sister writing. uses it too okay so i'm yeah and i'm using that and I'm dedicated to, I'm using the Syrian Starseed Tarot. It's glorious. It's gorgeous. Um, bright, vivid, saturated colors. Um, uh, non tradi- So, for example, instead of the King-Queen page, it's this, the um, Seeker, the Seeker, the Adept, the Master, and the Sage. Sage and the Master, you know. So I love that. Mm-hmm. And and they're they're non gendered. The, the 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 those cards are non gendered. Um, uh, diversity in terms not as much diversity as I'd like, but diversity in terms of the um, the skin colors and the faces and etc. Um, and it's more it's 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 about personal growth. So um, with a lot of them, there's a, a little bit of a description, and it and it bounces off of the traditional. But it's much more in what ways are you doing this? How can you, do, do, you know, so so it's much more about process, processing and less about telling you and more about you telling yourself and drawing it out of yourself and, and interacting. So I, I love that deck. I love that deck. It's it's the, the one I'm using this year. So that's so cool. Mm-hmm. It's And it's gorgeous. It's glorious. So yeah. So um, but I've, over the years, so I mentioned um, the mother piece deck mm-hmm. that I've used. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> the Toth deck, which was a an esoteric deck painted by uh, Lady Frida Harris, following instructions by Aleister Crowley. So it's a super powerful deck. It's based on, uh, it uses symbolism based on Crowley's thinking and, and Crowley's imagery from a number of different areas, different disciplines like science, philosophy, and various occult systems. Um, I've also, uh, one, another one that I, I like, it's called the, the uh, Crow's Magic, uh, I-C-K, Magic Deck, and it's, it's birds, not just crows, but it's birds, different types of birds on a black background with a lot of sacred geometry. Ooh. So it's very, it's, it, 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 it it's uh, less about telling a story or a narrative or actually creating a picture. And it's more, it re- that is uh, really intense in as much as you build the, the meaning of mm-hmm. that. So that might drive you crazy. It, <laughs> yeah. As you were saying, I was like, that sounds so cool and not for me. 
<laughs> but isn't it wonderful that there's all these decks yes. out there that for people and so I um, I use that one for a while and I still have it and love it and I'll probably cycle back to that one that I loved when I first got and I I don't want to say I hate it now but um, it just doesn't it's, there's nothing in there for me is the Arthurian Oh, mm-hmm. I got it because I'm um, a little bit of an Anglophile, um, <laughs> and and you know it it was I had read all of this mm-hmm. this uh, you know the uh, tales of Arthur Le Mot d'Arthur mm-hmm. and all of that sort of stuff and um, but even when I got it I, I just it was they were like pale people mm-hmm. and with a lot of blonde hair and and there's nothing wrong with blonde hair I love blonde you know but. Um, I love seeing people with really beautiful blonde hair, but it just, it never caught me. And I, and I kept forcing myself to try mm-hmm. to read from it because I knew who all these people were mm-hmm. and the different versions and the different myths and legends. And, and, and so I thought it would really work and you can't force tarot, <laughs> right? <laughs> you just can't force yeah. tarot. Um, I kept, I kept, 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 and I still have it. I don't know why, but, um, I keep, you know, uh, there's a, a, a an event where we, sometimes don't uh, donate gently loved um, witchy tools to be raffled off for uh, mm-hmm. for our group and I keep saying I'm going to take it and I never do I love the wild unknown tarot is that a tarot? I always thought it was an oracle deck they, they do have an oracle deck oh, okay, but they okay. also have a tarot deck really? Yeah. Tell, would you describe it? oh yes mm-hmm. uh, it is all black and white Oh. It looks to me like pencil drawings. Now, I'm not an artist, so I may mm-hmm. be getting this all wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's like very line. It's like a lot of lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, pencil drawings. And then they're just like rare splashes of color. Ooh. I love it. Kind of it's, like Rorschach? Uh, kind of. More okay. like, like if Rorschach had a baby with watercolor. Ooh. But, but it's very, but it's not, <laughs> not like uh, bright. Okay, gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. But I, it's like mostly black and then some white. And then very little color. Ooh. But I love it. And it's animals. Um, so it's all animals, which I also like because then I can remove race and class, which is like oh, so in right yes, away that yes, it's yes. in a way that, that I do not like want to align with. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> I love it. It is the only, uh, so I own my Rider Waite deck, which I, not the one I originally learned because that one got stolen, but mm-hmm. then I purchased another Rider Waite. Then I moved, then I couldn't do that anymore. So I moved to Modern Witch. And then I have the Wild Unknown, which I do not read from. But maybe someday I will. It's it's too far away from the like the 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 lineage that I am used to. But maybe someday I will. But it is I'm so attracted to that and the colors or the lack of color. <laughs> <laughs> but I I love it. So one of the things I and I'm just throwing this out. One of the things that I do I have a couple of decks that I like, but I don't feel are really I read from well mm-hmm. I I often sometimes I sometimes use those as clarifying cards so mm-hmm. if you you get a a, a spread mm-hmm. and it's like what the hell mm-hmm. you know and um I will pull one clarifying card mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like you can feel the click and mm-hmm. it all falls into place that I mean you could try and see that might be um, a, the, a good clarifying card. My sister mm-hmm. reads from multiple decks at one time. Yes, yes. And to me, that sounds ludicrous. Yeah, I know other people. I, I, I like I, what? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I only use that for. I generally do that for a clarifying mm-hmm. card. I did try because another friend of mine does multiple decks, and I tried that a couple of times, and I just couldn't switch my brain. Yeah. I couldn't switch my brain, but it works for me as a clarifying card because my brain has. I'm saturated in this one deck. I'm not, I don't have any idea what's going on. So just pulling something that's totally outside of that field mm-hmm. often just, it doesn't help. The, the clarifying card doesn't really help, but I mean, it, it does. Except, let me take that back. I don't necessarily get a relationship between the clarifying card and my spread. Oh, okay. But I'll look at the clarifying card and I'll say like, what the fuck? Put it to the <laughs> side and then look at my spread and all of a sudden my spread will make more sense. Okay. So... I, I just find my, my practice with tarot is so rigid in mm-hmm. some ways, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like my sister reads from multiple decks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I know, it you just know, seems kind of like I, right? I get into this, like, I don't know, like a serial monogamist with my, <laughs> with my decks. But that's, there's a, so, okay. So here's, okay, let's talk a little bit about the, about the monogamy, right? There's a richness 
to like knowing one thing mm-hmm. really, really well, the mono, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Knowing the one thing really, really well and diving in deep and yeah. pulling it in behind you mm-hmm. and letting it saturate you. There's, I mean, there's, so don't, I wouldn't consider it rigid. I would just it, consider it yeah. a deep, a really deep dive. A deep commitment. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that I even own the wild unknown <laughs> feels like slightly naughty to me. <laughs> like, I actually keep them in separate your, places. Your side so I don't, right? Because I don't want them to know your about side each other. <laughs> my side deck. <laughs> but I don't even read with the side yeah, deck. It's like even the fact that I have it in my house, uh-huh. I'm like, Shh. It's like having the phone number. Right? But not, not actually it's calling It's like someday them. I might be ready to call you. Mm-hmm. And you're, <laughs> but not now. And your other deck knows. Your deck knows <laughs> right. it's there. Your other deck is like, oh, honey. honey. Right. But yeah, it's t- talking to the other deck. Come on, bring it. Yeah. Bring and then Ryder Wade is just sitting there like, she doesn't even talk to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the that's the ex-wife you know right like, children when you're done come over here exactly. and let me learn you something <laughs> wait no one can see this but i'm doing like a cigarette like the old right. you know, the... like smoking <laughs> when y'all are done come on over here <laughs> yes our relationship with our decks yes and then we can later we'll talk about some oracle decks but, oh yeah um, yeah like yeah so i you know i have in fact I think that's what I have on is the crow's magic is on my oh. my um, intuition altar over there. Oh, yeah, I love so, that. Yeah. So, that's so cool. So, yeah. So, shall we dive really quickly into some of the basics of, of cards? Yeah, because yeah. I think the, the truth of it is, is people write books about this. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. there's like a lot of information out there, mm-hmm. but we thought it might be good just to give a basic overview mm-hmm. of, for, for anybody who maybe isn't that isn't that acquainted with tarot? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's 72 cards altogether. Does that sound right? I'm, I don't know. 72, 70, they're in the 70s. Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, there's a lot of cards. Um, because there are four suits, mm-hmm. and then there's a separate um, uh, reading set that we'll talk about. And so... Um, the 78 f- cards. 78, okay. You were really close. Okay. I was really close. Just it was like that. in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and um, so... If you have ever played cards, you played spade or go fish or something, mm-hmm. you might be familiar with the idea of suits. And tra- in a playing deck, there are spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. And clubs, yes. Okay. And so the the um the the, the suits are called the minor arcana, and we'll talk about what that means in a second. Um, and similarly, there's um traditionally there's uh, swords, wands, uh, ch- uh, not chalices, cups. Uh, cups, and what's earth? Uh, discs, discs or, or pentacles. pentacles. Discs I learned at pentacles. pentacles. Some people call it discs. T- it's called discs. Yeah. So, so those are the the, um, the 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 sets, and the cards go from one to ten, or ace to ten, and then we have the the court cards, and traditionally those are the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. And each one has its association. Would you care mm-hmm. to talk about the associations? Of the suits? Of the suits. Of the suits. The, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. So uh, for me, the one I gravitate to is water. Water mm-hmm. is with uh, cups. Mm-hmm. So that's like emotion, mm-hmm. intuition. Um, then we've got wands, which is fire. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's like uh, passion, uh, things that you desire. Uh, and just a, a heads up that uh, wands is fire and tarot. But that's that same association is not the same a lot of times in it, other yes like in other traditions outside of tarot. Mm-hmm. So, so I always I, I used to get really confused. I still get confused. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got uh, swords, mm-hmm. which is air, mm-hmm. um, which is also a different association outside of tarot. Yes, um, swords is air, so it's um, it's like thought and reason. It's a like for me, it's a lot about cutting things, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. like the cutting motion. Um, Insight, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, cutting insight for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, um, like there are a lot of images of like the swords floating ab- above people, mm-hmm. uh, hovering above people, um, and then what's the other one? Did the I... pentacles, oh, pentacles, and, discs. and that's mm-hmm. earth. Um, and those are oftentimes things like uh, I always explain it like the Maslow's hierarchy. It's like mm-hmm. the things at the base. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's a lot about career, money. Uh, your basic needs your body. being met. Mm-hmm. Your, yes, the body. So all the things that like I think of like have to come first in our lives mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. we build off of. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the earth. Like yeah. we sprout yeah. off of the earth. Yeah. So so and, and then each number 
um, has a certain association. I'm, we're not going to go through all of them, but for example, aces are, or the ones are the beginning, the initiation. So let's say we're talking about uh, uh, discs. The ace of, of pentacles or discs would be about start, maybe starting on your career or starting um, or building like abundance, like starting a bank account or something mm-hmm. like that. And, and uh, often that's how it's read mm-hmm. when in, with a, if you go to a traditional reader. Mm-hmm. Or like con- like like fives are conflict. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. I so like the one of the ways that I read is that I do the intersection of I think about what suit is it, mm-hmm. what number or mm-hmm. what place in the deck is it, mm-hmm. and then what position is it in my mm-hmm. reading, yeah. and then I look at those three things put together, and then that's how I know the meaning. Yes. And then exactly. and then and then I add a layer of intuition over the top mm-hmm. of that, and then that's how I read the cards. Yes. And 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 often the relationship of that card to the card before mm-hmm. or after or above or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it you know, it's it can be very it can be very simple and you can do this in a very easy simple way with your with just your cards in your book. And then the more you play with it, the in my opinion, the more I play with it, the richer the experience becomes, the richer the wisdom and the knowledge and from the sounds of it, the healing or alignment becomes um, when you start to take in a lot of other things. But I, it, you know, as we, as you listen to us, it can sound kind of intimidating and it doesn't have to be. It can, it can be um, a, 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 clear Mm -hmm. it can and it can be you can start on this on this path very easily i think Mm -hmm. well and one way of doing that is actually to start by only reading major arcana yes or only meaning minor reading minor Mm -hmm. arcana let's talk about that now so we i said we were going to come back to that so the major the major major arcana that's 22 cards 22 of this of the 78 Mm -hmm. and um and those are those are large archetypal um when you when you get a reading with a lot of major arcana, it's deep and it's profound. Um, and and uh, there, you, you want to talk about maybe maybe one of your favorite uh, major arcana. So so the major arcana oftentimes is is based on the fool's journey. Is mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like I and I'm a huge I'm huge into like union mm-hmm. archetypes. Mm-hmm. So each card represents that uh, step on the fool's journey. Mm-hmm. Other like uh, you know like other things that have been involved with fool's journey is even something like Star Wars, mm-hmm. you yes. know, or mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. So like these these sorts of like journeys are um, like the hero's journey mm-hmm. are, are like all around us in our culture and it's present here in the oftentimes in the major arcana deck uh, my per- my personal favorite major mm-hmm. arcana mm-hmm. is the high priestess card Did, was it before someone gave you that one or just you, well, they the, knew that it would be good for you i personally think that they i don't even know if they knew what they were doing mm-hmm. giving me that card but again i put that card away and then years later after i had developed a relationship with that card i um i've i made that connection gotcha, gotcha. so i'm not i'm not really sure but the idea of like this connection with um, the seen and unseen, mm. you know, um, and like existing in the world between the seen and the unseen, and navigating that, and then as like serving as that person that goes between, um, just really resonates with me. That's a it's so just for your for your um, the, the the benefit of our listeners, uh, the first card is the fool. Mm-hmm. And we can talk more about that in another time. The second card is the magician, and then the third is the high priestess. And so you have the the this is very rider right weight the male mm-hmm. and female kind of back and forth um, in terms of presentations of magic. In this case, the magician mm-hmm. and the high priestess, with the magician being you just did the hand I sign, did. <laughs> you know, the, the the drawing down from the from from the heavens or mm-hmm. from the divine, and then manifesting it into the earth. Mm-hmm. So the magician being very more manifesting more um physical production of ma- mm-hmm. magic whereas the high priestess is more the emotional spiritual manifestations of magic mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. and and we'll talk more about this over over the next year or so so you can hear more insight but i love that the the um that idea that there's that that feminine principle that we've talked about when we've talked about um friday the 13th when we've talked about um, emotions and water and that uh, that receptive knowing innate knowing that she represents and sometimes they show her a uh, veil so it's 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 a knowledge that's there but if you it might require 
um, sitting and becoming super still to make it a part of you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know if I have a favorite. I can tell you what my, my, um, my life card is. Oh, okay. My life card. Oh, what is it in the, I don't even know what it is in the traditional. Okay. One, two, three, four. What's five? The Hierophant? Uh, yes, the Hierophant. Okay. I'm, that's, that's my life card. Really? Which says so much, yeah, you know, structure, um, a lot of traditionalism, um, but also knowledge, and that's um, that's my. I I, I I struggle with that card. I, I've been, and I've, had, and I've right. sixty something years to struggle with. It. <laughs> well, not really because mm-hmm. I haven't, but but yeah. When I first got, when I first realized that that was my life card, it was oh, okay. I can kind of see that because I w- I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I was an organist for many years, so I'm embedded in structures. And now I'm kind of I'm kind of like not liking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of resisting. It. It's like, uh, well, okay. I mean, it's it, it's very insightful. It tells me a lot about myself that probably I don't want to know. But there it is. Boy, if that isn't the definition of tarot. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yes. And my death card. I mean, my death card. My um, year card is the tower. Huh. <laughs> so as you can tell, how are you is, experiencing that? I, this is a tower year for me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not be thrown from the tower. Ooh. I'm trying to, you know, listen to the the lessons that are being there. So it's not as, um, you know, th- there's not the lightning and the, the or the sky fire. A friend of ours called it, um, as much. Um, and I'm trying to kind of go with it. And experience it all as just, you know what? You said you were going to do this stuff. Here's an opportunity. When you when your life is going down the toilet, this is a wonderful chance for you to learn how to swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love the way that you say that because I think sometimes people can be afraid of tarot because mm-hmm. when they read it, it's the sense that this is the way that it will be. Mm-hmm. But for mm-hmm. me, whenever I, I, I almost, like if, if I were to have the tower as a year card, mm-hmm. it'd be like, how can I find? How can I figure out how to climb my way and exit this tower before it crumbles? Sort yeah, of thing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not doomed. It's a mm-hmm. call to action mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. an awareness. Yeah. How can I ride this wave? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. My year card is the hanged one. Ooh, which is another one about surrender, right? I think I think both of those cards are yeah. about surrender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The hanged one for me is is really surrender oriented, and so in my in my journal. Um, I, I printed out a bunch of copies of the hanged one card and I like they're t- I made them really small, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like about the size of my thumb mm-hmm. and I've, I've cut them out. And so for at the beginning of each month, I paste it into my, onto my calendar for my bullet journal to like help me remember. Wow. That. That's good. That's great. Uh, that, and that came from doing the ritual journal, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. like they, they have like a place for that and you can actually mm-hmm. buy little stickers. Yes. But like, I wasn't about to. No, I know you showed me yours <laughs> and I said, I'm doing that too. Yeah, so, so I, I like, like made all yes. the little things and I glue them in. So me too. Me too. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I love that idea. Thank you so much for giving that to me. You are very I, cool. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, it's the, the beauty of it. It can be this wonderful reminder of things that we already know. It can be a great deal of, of, it can be like this shock in the dark insight, like, damn, I wish I'd known that before, but now I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be something that can invoke a lot of fear. And like anything else, it's going it, to, you know, it can happen. It, 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 certain aspects of it are going to happen. But the big difference is how are, how are we letting it happen to us? How are we approaching it? And so just having the insight, knowing that, okay, this is my tower year. What are some of the decisions that I need to make so that, you know, I'm Mm -hmm. not left in shambles at the end Mm -hmm. on December 31st. So though it's, is it from birthday to birthday or calendar to calendar? I think it's, I guess it. I've done it birthday to birthday. Yeah. Yeah. But it it actually is that year though, because you use the Mm -hmm. year. So yeah. Okay. Well, I need to think about that. Anyway, Mm -hmm. I want to make it as short as possible. (laughs) Right. Which one is the shortest possible? Let's do that one. (laughs) That sounds good to me because my birthday is September. See, your birthday is in February. February, So so. it's... uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. I see what... Yeah. Okay. Uh, So maybe as we finish up, what what could we do? Maybe we could talk about if if someone came to us Mm -hmm. and said, I'm brand new to this. 
how how would how can I get into this mm-hmm. that's not overwhelming? Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, what would be the advice you would give? I would. So this is okay. So you, recognizing that we're coming from we're not traditional tarot teachers. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would say go to a store where you can actually see the decks and and look at them and find make sure they're tarot decks and not oracle decks. We'll talk about that another time. And then I would say find one that speaks to you. Um, you often hear stories of someone going into a store and the tarot deck like falls off a shelf, shelf mm-hmm. and hits them in the head. That has never happened to me. But, you know, if that happens to you, there you go. Mm-hmm. And then just sitting with that deck, you know, using the book and reading what's there, looking at each card. You can do a number of different things. Some people just take each, like, do the, the major and minor arcana, do the major arcana first and then the minor arcana one per day. And then just read that card and do that. Um, I prefer something a little more. Um, I like to just pull a card and then just dive into that card. Um, so, but but the idea I would just suggest just learning your learning your deck, learning your deck, and then that's really like the foundation. That's where everything starts. After you've learned the deck, that's when the magic, the juice happens. But um, just finding a deck that you like and just and starting to learn it. What about you? Are you ready for two different perspectives? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I would say do major research. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because there are, like, uh, anybody can make a deck mm-hmm. and call oh, yeah. it a tarot deck. Yes, they can. So um, I have zero clues about this, but, like, mm-hmm. I was, the last time I was in, like, a New Age store, there was a Stranger Things deck. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I didn't even look at it, but I was like, oh, shit, there's Stranger Things. Yeah, no, like, wow. like, wow. You yeah. know, there, I, I've seen cat decks. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and like, anybody can make a deck, mm-hmm. and it and and it doesn't have the symbolism, um, and it doesn't have, like, mm-hmm. the relationship between the cards. It's just somebody making pretty pictures on yeah, different yeah. things. Mm-hmm. And maybe that works for some people. It does not work for me. <laughs> So I would I would recommend. So there you go. Here's another listener. here's another here's another approach. Uh, like doing some research on like is this deck considered um, like a quality deck? Oh, gotcha. Okay. And then mm-hmm. maybe finding some decks that you think um, that that have been because there are people that rate decks mm-hmm. and not just yes. like oh this deck is pretty ten out of ten you mm-hmm. know or like this deck doesn't have reflective colors on it mm-hmm. zero out of ten don't like. You know, like, there are people who study tarot who will rate these decks. There, there's some really good stuff on the internet. Yeah, so finding mm-hmm. that, and then maybe narrowing it down to the types of decks that you like mm-hmm. that also are predisposed to giving you quality readings because mm-hmm. of their symbol, like, the symbolism and things that run through them. Gotcha. And then go to, oh. <laughs> okay, <there's more. laughs> go to the store ah, and maybe okay. hold the, the mm-hmm. or, or, or order them on Amazon mm-hmm. and then hold them. And see out of those three or five or whatever that you picked, mm-hmm. which one really calls. That's to another you. way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I like your way too. I like yeah. your way too. Yes. So yeah. So mine is like way more analytical, I think. And <laughs> that's okay. And then and then if you started to read, I I prefer doing the daily pulls mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. one card to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then I also really jam out. There's a chart online where it has the numbers running across the top and the suits running on the, on the Ooh, you know, like mm-hmm. the Y-axis and then mm-hmm. the X-axis mm-hmm. is the numbers. And then it ties in the, so like you said, like um, the ace is new, is new beginnings. And then how does that tie into the cups? Ooh, oh. How does that ki- tie into wands? Ooh, and so it's like this chart. Yeah. I love that okay. chart. Okay. But that's the way my brain works. Okay. And that chart helped me understand the interconnectedness of the mm-hmm, meetings. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's how I, I recommend to people mm-hmm. if that's the way their brain works. Yeah. Yeah. That works for me. I and, get it. I get and it. And I think, and, and I guess bottom line, mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping our listeners understand is there is no one way. There is no one way. Yeah. To what do you always say? There's how many flavors? That's why there's 31 flavors. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there is no one way to learn. Mm-hmm. And I think anybody who says this is the way you have to learn is probably trying to sell you something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, Whatever way feels right to learn, whatever way feels right to select the deck, do that mm-hmm. and just start. Right. Yeah. So, so, so some of you may have listened to this episode and said, oh, well, that's interesting. Eh, it's not my jam. Mm-hmm. And that's totally valid. And some of you may have, uh, may be like totally way past us and think, oh, they're so cute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally valid too. And then for those of you who might be, okay, well, I have a, you know, I, I have a deck. Let me see what I can do with my deck. Mm. This, I, I would, my suggestion is go, uh, allow yourself 
to feel the magic. My, you know, that, you know, hold that deck and recognize that it can be a whole lot of things. It could be, it could predict your future. It could help you to heal. It could help, it could draw you into better alignment with the universe and with the divine. It can give you insight into yourself. It's a really rich, um, witchy, rich, witchy tool, Mm -hmm. um, that can provide a great deal if you're open to that. And, um, my suggestion is if you, you know, consider being open to it. And I hope our conversation today has helped you find a way to listen to your own intuition and knowing how to be, how that openness would work for you. So our poem is by Tomas Tranströmer, who is a Swedish poet. Um, uh, He won the Nobel Prize. I don't exactly remember when, but he died just about mm, five, six years ago Um, and wrote a great deal about nature and stuff. (laughs) Nature. (laughs) Nature. He wrote a lot about nature. Tired of all who come with words, words, but no language. I went to the snow-covered island. The wild does not have words. The unwritten pages spread themselves out in all directions. I come across the marks of roe deer's hooves in the snow. Language, but no words. Beautiful. We hope you have enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. It would be great if you would help make Witchy Wit possible and get access to exclusive content by donating on Patreon. We'd love it if you join our Witchy community and enjoy shareable content on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Would you do us a big favor and support us by rating and reviewing us wherever you get your podcasts? It's free and helps witchy folks find us. Feel free to email us at witchywitpodcast at gmail.com. We love to hear from our community. Reach out and let us know what's brewing in your cauldron. New episodes are released every second and fourth Friday. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform so our episodes go right to your playlist. You can listen as you ride your broom. Stay Stay witchy, witchy, y'all!